Hey guys, how are you tonight? Welcome to Whimsical Wednesday. My name is Tracy and I am uh, the furniture artist behind Tracy's Fancy and I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint. And we go live here every single night. This is our spot, Wednesday night, seven o'clock p.m. Central Time. And we paint live together. These little Facebook pop-ups are annoying. Hi, everybody. Please say hello when you come on. I see we've got some people on there all right. Nina, hi, Precious. How are you? Good to see you, hon, all the way from Florida. I already know where she's from. Hello, Pam. How are you from Minnesota? Thank you for telling us where you're from. Hey, Valerie, how are you? Here we go. Woo! Brandy, thank you for being here. Thanks, you guys, for saying hello and for saying where you are. Um, I'm having a very late night cup of coffee tonight, um, and I'm super excited about this project. So let me tell you a little bit um, about what I wrote. I wrote that it's for beginners. If you're not a beginner, stick around. There, I'm sure there'll still be something that you'll learn. If you are a wannabe painter and you've been coming to my, my lives or any of the other brand ambassadors, retailers lives, and you really have wanted to build up the courage to do it, um, but you just haven't pulled all the pieces together yet, um, I'm just gonna do step by step with this piece. And the reason that I can do that is because, hello, Lisa from uh, Idaho, hi there, um, and Kentucky, hi there, hi, Heather. Uh, this piece that behind me I acquired. So it's not a custom piece, which most of my pieces that I do here on lives with you guys are custom pieces for my clients. And I'm limited in how much I can uh, move from whatever my client and I have already discussed. And um, so I, I, I'm a little bit limited. Like with the desk that we did together last week, uh, y'all talked me into doing stripes and she didn't really want stripes on there, but then I did get a message from her saying, I watched the video, you do what you think looks good. And y'all loved it when we posted it yesterday. Thank y'all for being there. Um, so this one is a piece that someone gave me. So I didn't even invest any money in this piece, okay? This piece didn't cost me a thing. It's gonna, it, it will be an investment of my time. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you so much. Hi, Alicia. Uh, yes, y'all, if you have questions, please answer them. Dixie Bell is here on the, thank you, Nina, for sharing as well. I really appreciate that. Dixie Bell's saying hi right now. So Dixie Bell's always here in the background. If you have questions about what I'm talking about, if you have questions about product, uh, anything like that, anything that I turn my back and start working with, um, ask away. Someone here will help. I might help. Yay, Jane, you're one of those. So I call that the gathering stage. You are gathering all of the information from all the places. And a lot of times you end up in overwhelm or you end up a little bit paralyzed or, you know, you, you get, um, sometimes you get almost too much information. <laughs> That's how I feel. So this piece I'm gonna do as if I were a non-painter, not the whole thing, okay, we're gonna vary. We're gonna, I mean, we're gonna move away from that. But to start, let's just imagine that I've picked this piece up from Facebook Marketplace or a local garage sale or a used furniture place on the corner. Um, uh, sorry, I got distracted by a comment. <laughs> um, you've brought it home and you're like, okay, now what? Now, this is a pretty big piece, okay? This is, uh, I don't know, the top part of it there, if I'm five, six, I don't know, maybe, it might be like seven feet, maybe seven feet tall. Pretty big piece. Don't be afraid of the big pieces, y'all. You don't have to start small with a picture frame or a pot or a stool. You don't have to, you can go big. Actually, big is fun. There's a lot of space, a lot of space to be creative. Yeah, there's a lot more room for mistakes, but that is okay because there are no mistakes because it's only paint and you just paint over it. Um, so there's a lot of room. So don't be afraid of the big pieces. And sometimes you can get them for less than the, the more three drawer chest because people don't wanna move these things. This one's actually not very heavy. It is a uh, armoire with one shelf in the middle. It has a back to it. It doesn't have a TV hole in the back of it. And it has two drawers on the bottom. All right, so I do have a plan. So when you get your piece home, the very first thing you want to do is kind of decide what am I going to do with this piece now if you get stuck and you don't know what you want to do you can move right on to cleaning I already know that I have some ideas for this piece this is this is my idea does anyone want to tell me what this says <laughs> it was really hard to take this picture today also like hello how can I fit me, the picture, and the armoire in the piece. I was like this, and this, and this. <laughs> so 
So this is my inspiration, okay, right here. Go big or go home, exactly. And it, it really, there's so much more room to practice on these pieces, and I'm gonna do that, okay? Yes, you like my Kayla earrings, absolutely. These are Kayla Water Dean Designs earrings. They sure are, I ordered these from her. I did, I was like, girlfriend, let me get some, get some of those hot pink earrings. So thank you for noticing. Um, bright and sparkly, because this piece is gonna be a little bit fun, and, and that's why I wore these earrings. Okay, so this piece right here, anyone, any guesses? Any guesses what I'm doing here? Any, yes, thank you, Jason, exactly. So I'm gonna put this right over here. So I have been doing a lot of the gumball machines and uh, my whimsical piece that was all wild and tie-dyed and I was like, I wanna stay in this fun vibe that I'm in right now. I'm really enjoying it with the non-fun things that are happening in our world. I'm really liking the fun vibe. So I am doing, I have always, always, always loved the whole Marie Antoinette vibe, the look and uh, the, the, the movie. I've watched it over and over just because of the scenery. Well, I'm not gonna go that gaudy with this piece. This is gonna be more of a play on it and sort of pop art, okay? So now I know what I'm gonna do. I've got, those colors will be on it. I've got my color set out, but now I need to clean it, okay? So you've brought your piece home and you need to clean it. Now, let me tell you that uh, Dixie Bell's White Lightning, this isn't the best piece to clean with White Lightning because White Lightning's amazing. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's in crystal form, um, right here. It's trisodium phosphate with a little bit of mixed with some other good stuff and I don't even know what it is, but it works. So this is White Lightning, it's crystal form just like this. <clears throat> I have a spray bottle that I keep all the time. This spray bottle, this is my clean, this is my cleaner bottle, okay? No one cleans on live because who wants to watch you clean? Yet you have to do this step. Whatever it is that you're cleaning with, you have to do this. So, you know, I get questions all the time from people. Well, you said we use white lightning, but you know, I never saw you do it. Like, what do you do? And, and I, I didn't, oh, I didn't use water afterwards. I'm like, I'm just gonna clean tonight. I'm literally gonna clean this with you guys, okay? So let's get going. So open, I marked this bottle with tape so that I never, ever, ever mix this up with any of my other spray bottles that have pure water in them, all right? So I take, uh, the, the jar actually calls for two heaping, two heaping teaspoons, I believe, to a gallon of water. Um, and obviously my little jar is not a gallon of water. Yeah, two heaping tablespoons to a gallon of water. So I've got my little funnel. This is me in my garage. This is you, okay? This is you. Imagine this is you. So I'm just gonna use a heaping teaspoon because this is not anywhere near a gallon. Plenty, Whoa! plenty. And then I fill the rest up with water. Hold please. water and I'm just going to swirl this down. Now, if you're working on a piece that's like an antique, especially the European antiques, let's say you're lucky enough to find one that's never been painted and you really, really want to paint it and you're going to have people hating all over you because you painted your antiques, uh, but they paint up beautifully. Um, oh, it is crazy, Marshall. Absolutely. You have to clean. You don't know what's been on this piece. This, but the, the antiques especially have been oiled and buttered and stained and Lord only knows what's on those, you know, so you've got to clean it. I mean, Dixie Bell paint is good and it has great adhesion power, but why, why test the waters? Why, you know, why even risk it when you're going to put a lot of time into painting your piece, right? So, um, you got to clean it. Now, what I want to talk to you about this is this piece, I acquired it. I happen to know the people who had it and I know what's under it and I know what they used to paint on it. And they did not use Dixie Belt. It was years ago. They painted this probably five years ago before I was affiliated with Dixie Belt. So I know what's on it. Um, but most of the time nowadays when you're buying furniture offline, if you're buying on Marketplace or something like that, any of those venues, you very, it's I mean, you don't even get raw furniture hardly anymore. Everyone's been painting furniture for so many years now that you're acquiring pieces that are painted. So you have no idea what's under that paint. You really don't. Now, do you need to sand it down? No, you don't. If you look like on this piece, it's adhered. Everything is adhered. I don't have any chipping. There's no peeling. I've checked, I've looked for chipping, peeling, flaking, anything like that. If none of that Oh, Harlow's giving me hearts. Hi, sugar bear. Hi, baby. My granddaughter is watching. How sweet. She's giving me hearts. 
<coughs> so if you, you've checked your surface and your surface is good, then you can go ahead and paint right on your surface or prime or, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. So don't get ahead of yourself, but I know that I don't need to sand this piece. I know I'm going to paint or prime or paint right on it. So all you need to clean it. You've mixed your white lightning. I showed you what it looks like. I showed you how I use my funnel, fill it with water. Here I go. And when I tell y'all I give it a shower, I truly give it a shower. Okay. This is what I do. I start up here at the top and I spray it all the way, the whole entire thing. Just like this. I mean, sometimes, depending on the piece and what it looks like, I've been known to dump a bowl. Like, I've dumped a bowl all over. So I just let this sit on it, run, go down. I want it to go into all the cracks and crevices, all the way across, just like this. Now, I'm not sure how far down y'all can see me down here, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray this while I've got you here. We're gonna let it do its job, especially in the cracks and crevices. Now. I'm not crazy about it, you guys. I don't go nuts, okay? I'm not gonna go nuts. I, I'm not gonna get the toothbrush out and, and get in all those cracks and crevices like that. For the most part, I'm not gonna go crazy like that, but I do give it a really good shower. I use a lot of paper towels. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Brenda. And then I just start, I start, paint, I start uh, cleaning. Now, up in here, if there are a lot of carvings and I can literally see a lot of dirt, then I go ahead and get that cleaned off as well as well and maybe I'll break out you know a brush or something like that but I'm just mostly wanting to break up any oils any furniture polish that's on here uh, and get rid of all the dirt and the cob dirt and cobwebs okay now this piece is really dirty on the inside I'm not gonna clean the inside for you guys tonight uh, now I was talking to y'all about if this were a this piece is actually quite clean if this were a antique piece, uh, you would see so much dirt coming off on the rug. You would see stain, you would see oils. Um, this one is actually pretty clean. It really is. I mean, I'm hardly getting any dirt off of here. Um, I would clean because the cloth will be dirty as you put big mamas on it. I tried it. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you guys are talking amongst yourself. Okay, so then the other question is hardware, right? So while I'm cleaning this off, I'm thinking to myself, oh, well, I forgot about the hardware. So am I going to paint over this hardware? Because, you know, that's kind of a trend right now, you guys, is just to paint right over the hardware. Well, I know that on this piece I'm not. I'm not going to paint over the hardware. I am probably not even going to use this hardware. It's a little bit boring. I don't even think I can make it fancy, and I want to do something kind of fancy for this uh uh, Marie Antoinette. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off. So you can use a screwdriver, you can use a drill. Um, it's got a Phillips head on it. Yeah, pull that right off. And then a lot of times these are tacked on with like tiny little tack nails. These were not. These plates are a lot of times tacked on like that. So what I do is I get a flathead screwdriver underneath there, a tiny flathead, maybe like the little flatheads that you use for watches. That way you're not gouging into your furniture. And I'll put it up under that plate and I just start wiggling it and I pull it out and I go to the top and I'll wiggle it and pull it out. I'll just go back and forth, back and forth until I work that plate up off of that wood and then you can just pop it off. Um, and you'll see that there'll be two tiny little, tiny little tack nails on the top and the bottom. But this one did not, did not have that, okay? So here's these pieces. I usually have a bucket, like a shoe, like a shoe bucket or a Ziploc bag that I drop all of the parts down into, all of my parts. I don't have that for you guys right now. So let me take this one off as well. Oops. Come on. All right, got that one off. And then you wanna take these off if you're not gonna paint over them. Take them off when you're cleaning because a lot of gunk settles behind where these plates were. So I'm gonna be sure you get that off there. Okay, so what I wanna make sure that you do not miss is uh, you have to rinse your white lightning. Yes, starting from square one. Yes, I'm so glad. I am so glad. Uh, do you need any pre-stain under no paint gel stain? 
Uh, I'm going to, oh, y'all are, are asking really fast questions. Okay, so let's keep going. We are starting from square one, taking it easy. Um, we've got these handles down here. Same thing. Let's get these removed so we can clean underneath them. Get your little bucket or your baggie ready because you don't want to lose any part. I don't plan to use these same, uh, this same hardware, but just in case you want to have somewhere to store it. Make sure you spray your, your white lightning where that hardware was. Get that cleaned off really well. Now, what about my drawers here? They, are, uh, they may not be the size that I want for the hardware that I want to use. So that is what your Dixie Bell mud is for. And I'm going to show that to you here in just a second. Okay, let me get Dixie Bell mud. Hold, hold tight. Okay, here is my Dixie Bell mud. So this stuff is fill. It's like a wood filler, but it's it's better than a wood filler. It's got a lot more play time in it. I really like it. Looks just like this. So if you are not sure um, that you're going to be use the exact same hardware, like these two holes, if you think that you're going to use different hardware there, just fill these now. After you get your piece cleaned really well, you'll want to fill your holes and let that dry, sand back, and then you can pre drill. You can drill new holes for your new hardware once you get that, once you decide what it is. Um, I used Dixie Bell Mud for the first time. It is so easy, Brittany, and it's great with Ray stencils too. So this piece right here, let me keep talking to you guys. I don't have my mic on. Actually, I should probably put that on. Uh, hold on. Because I'm gonna turn my back to y'all. So, uh, Dixie Bell Med is also really, really good with Ray stencils. You can use sea spray as well, um, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. I am going to be using Ray stencils on this piece. I'm going to be doing stripes on this piece. I'm going to be doing my own hand artwork on this piece, which I'll give y'all a little glimpse of in just a minute, okay? We'll, we'll for sure look at that before we leave. Okay, let me, here's my mic. Plugging that in. And let me get this clipped on right here okay can y'all hear me good y'all hear me all right all right so we are using white lightning to clean this off so when you find your piece you get it home um you want to clean it really really well with white lightning we've we've uh, just rewind the video when we're done and you can see what we've done here we put two two tablespoons to a gallon although that's this is not a gallon size so i have my bottle marked because i don't ever want to mix this up because you don't want to mistake this as water. All right, so after you've cleaned your piece, which I haven't cleaned like super thoroughly right here, uh, then you go to the next step. So y'all know how we just gave this a total bath in, in uh, White Lightning. The next thing we're gonna do is give it a total bath in, <laughs> where's my bottle? In water. You want to make sure that you have all of the white lightning rinsed off of the surface, okay? Because uh, white lightning can keep your paint from sticking. So you've got to make sure that you get everything back down to just raw, okay, with no, no chemicals. So here we go. I, this is, looks like a whiskey bottle. Um, it's not, it's water. Um, so I start all the way from the top again. Now I use a lot of water, a lot, just like this. So I would have done the sides, um, the inside, if I didn't have y'all here with me, all right? So I just let this drip, I don't rush it, spray the whole thing. If you need to get like a little scouring pad out, you know, if you're going for a super, shoot, if you're going for a super fine, a super fine finish, um, super fancy finish, and you want to have like, uh, everything like super finished, then you want to for sure use like some sort of scouring pad so that you can get all of the little bumps and stuff like that off. We, on this piece, are going for a super layered, super well-traveled, um, lots of color. That's what we're going for. So again, going back, wiping off, getting this nice and dry, all right? We're gonna do that. Now we're gonna talk about 
I'm going to talk to you about do you, this piece that you've brought home, whether it's painted or unpainted, do you need to prime it? And I'm going to show you the two different primers that Dixie Bell carries. They're both fabulous. Uh, one, well, actually, they carry three. They've got, you know, Slick Stick as well. Um, but we're not talking about Slick Stick tonight. We're talking about Boss Clear and Boss White, which are the two different primer options. Um, and there's reasons that you would use one or the other. It's not just, you know, a hit or miss. There's actually like a method to the madness in how you decide what you're doing. So, give me just a second. We'll get this wiped down. Not the best, but I'm on camera and I don't want to bore y'all to tears. So, all right. So, let's see here. Um, is mud a wood filler? Yes, it acts as a wood filler. So, you can use it to uh, repair corners, um, fill holes. This is what I fill my holes with. This is what it looks like in the jug, just like this. And uh, you can use it, it's like, works like a Bondo. You know, it feels, it feels, you can build up edges, corners, gouges, fill holes. And then, like I said, you can also use it on your, um... yes, Alicia, absolutely, absolutely. Um, if there is a retailer on here right now, Linda is asking where she can purchase this paint in South Florida. So if you're a retailer in South Florida, someone let her know. If anyone um, does not want to go shopping yet and they want to order online, you can use my link here on this video and order online as well. But a, 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 most of the retailers, I think, have opened. So, um, Or you can go to www.dixiebellpaint.com and go up into the right, I believe it's on the right hand side, it says find a retailer and put in your zip code and it'll pop up all the retailers that are close to you, okay? Uh, you're welcome, Lisa, you're welcome. All right, so next, like I said, most of the pieces that you're gonna buy used nowadays, someone's probably tried to paint them. If you brought home something unpainted that is raw wood, whether it's real wood or composite or anything like that, you have to decide if you're gonna prime or not prime. If you've brought home a painted piece, you still need to decide if you're gonna prime or not prime. So let's say I don't know what's under this piece. Maybe this piece was painted with chalk paint and it's open and porous and maybe they didn't seal it well and I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna paint it all white or I'm gonna paint it all sawmill gravy or I'm gonna paint it all uh, soft pink. Um, and I put all this time into it and I paint it and I didn't prime it, I didn't prime it. I paint it and then I'm gonna seal it with gator hide or I'm gonna seal it with top coat satin or clear. And I put my sealer on it and I didn't prime it. And through my soft pink, all of a sudden I get these like red faded, yucky hints of color in like the corners and the crevices and sometimes just on the flat surface. It will happen, it does happen. So you kind of have to be careful. You need to know if you need to prime or not. So this piece, I don't know, I don't need to, but I'm gonna do it anyway for you. So I really wanna leave a lot of black in this piece because the artwork that I'm gonna do, I want to have black undertone under it. Um, but this is a Boss right here. It's called uh, Boss, they've got clear and white. It means blocks, odors, stains, and uh, blocks, odors, and stains right here, see? So the thing is, one is white and one is clear. But what I wanna show you is I'm gonna do one on one side and one on the other. People freak out all the time and we get messages all the time. People are like, what, I ordered primer and clear and I put it on and it's not clear. But if you just give it a few minutes, it will become clear, all right? So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do white for you on this side, okay, right here. I'm gonna do white. Here's white. That's white. And this is clear. You can see that it's obviously a lot more clear than that, but if you're here and you're up close, you can see that it's got white in it and it doesn't look clear and that freaks people out. But that is clear and that's going to dry completely clear. So I'm going to do like this. So I could coat this entire piece in clear if I wanted to and keep my black undertone. So see right there, that's one of the reasons when I said you, you need to decide which one you're gonna use. Um, if you like the wood that you have underneath 
if, if you want to paint your wood piece, but yet you want to baby wipe back some of it or sand back or wet distress and you want some of that wood tone to come through, then you don't want to use boss white because if you use boss white, you're going to have like this halo effect under your paint. There's going to be your wood, then a layer of boss white, and then your paint. And when you wipe back your pretty mermaid tail and trying to show your wood, you're going to end up with like this white in between and they call that the halo effect. So that is something that you uh, may not want to do. Now, if you're not planning on, um, my favorite is Boss White. That's my favorite. I like it the most, but you don't have, it's not as versatile as clear. Um, if you don't have any plans to, to distress or wipe back or anything like that, um, Kathy's asking a question about slick stick. So yeah, I'll talk to y'all about that in just a second. I wasn't sure, but thought, since the posts were round, they would be the best one to use. Okay, hold on. So if you aren't planning to do any of that and you're just wanting to block color or like someone said about nicotine and something smelling, go for, go for a Boss White. It, it blocks all of those, the nicotine odors and the nicotine stains that actually comes through as a stain. Um, it's really, really good. So that, I, that's what I would do. I use Boss White more than I use anything. But this piece I don't want to because I really like the black underneath. So. Um, that's that. Slick stick. Slick stick is really for like glass and things that are very, very slick and shiny. So glass and metal. Slick stick does not have any blocking abilities to it. It's not going to block your stains. It's not going to block odors. It's not going to block color. It's just, it's just a, an, an adhesive, a very strong adhesive that will hold on to any slick surface. And um, so like my gumball machines that I paint, I use a lot of slick stick right now because I'm painting a lot of gumball machines. So the slick stick, the, they're metal, and so I paint the slick stick. Now you might need slick stick on some, like those dining room sets that have that super, super, super high shine that is just like glass almost. I don't even know what you call that baked on finish that's like ridiculous high shine. You can't even hardly scuff it. Um, that I would use slick stick on. Um, okay, so that's good. Just know, Kathy, that if you want to use a slick stick on there, it's fine. It has nothing to do if it's round or flat or anything like that. It's more about the slick surface. But just know that you may still want to use one of the boss over it for bleed through. Cause unless you're going with a dark color paint, you don't have to worry about it. If you're going with like a bright or bold color that won't show bleed through anyway, then you don't need to worry about it. Two coats of boss, um, what about slick stick on tile? Absolutely slick stick is needed on tile. So when y'all saw us paint our kitchen cabinets and my kitchen backsplash, my tiles in my kitchen, um, and then I did the artwork over my stove, all of those were coated with slick stick first. We use slick stick on those. Um, laminate as well. Yes, is it only boss white that blocks odors or is it boss, boss clear blocks odors as well? Both of them. They, they, it, they do the same thing. It's just that white will block color more for you than, uh, than the clear. The clear won't block color. Like if you, if you're paint, if you're painting, if you want to paint this white, you would, I would use boss, boss white because why, why would you not? Boss white is going to dry like this. You're already one step closer to your white color of paint. Why use boss clear? Then you have to just use more and more paint. I mean, you were going to prime it anyway, so you might as well block the, some of the color as well. Does that make sense? Both block odor, exactly. Okay, all right, so that's that. That gives you a little bit of knowledge on um, Dixie Mud. It gives you a little bit of knowledge on white lightning. Um, shows you that I take my parts away, parts off and I put them in a baggie or a bucket together and I usually put my customer's name on it or I drop it inside one of the drawers. Um, and then I get started with my design. So do y'all wanna see a little bit of my design idea here? All right, let me show you before we go. Um, I'm gonna show you my design idea. Y'all ready? <laughs> uh, you wanna scare those? Ooh, that's cotton candy hair, lots of sweets, rosy cheeks. She started out having big shoulders. She looked a little too German, like big, big, <laughs> like me. So I needed to make her a little more dainty. So that is that. Um, this is what I'm thinking I'm going to do. 
um, large, largely. I've drawn it out. So when I do like any type of free art like that, I usually try to draw it out. Now I have to decide on placement, y'all. So I've got a lot that I'm working with right here, like her, the handles and the breaks in the doors and the breaks in the drawers. So I've got vertical breaks, horizontal breaks, knobs, hardware, that sort of stuff. So I have to kind of really stand back and decide, do I want I really would prefer for her face to be more like right here and then the cotton candy here coming up like this with all the stuff on it, but that puts her face right in the middle of all four points. All four breaks are right there. So that's really not gonna work for me. I mean, it really isn't. So I think I may actually have to take her face down, her shoulder starting all the way at the bottom and a little bit of neck, her face more in here, and then let this build her hair up this way. So I don't know, I'm kind of sitting on that right now, I'm not sure, but at least I've shared this with you guys. Um, I took this actual design from, I drew it myself, but I took it from, um, there's someone that I follow on Instagram called, I think he's called Glitterville, I don't know if y'all are familiar with him, but uh, this is an actual display in his store. It's like one of the dis model display things or whatever. So I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. So um, that's how I'm starting. And then the rest of it all over and around, I want to do very Marie Antoinette, like the damask wallpapers. And do I hear that? We're having like a dog war outside. Dogs are going crazy. So like damask wallpaper and stripes and French script and lots of gold. So um, make sight to wipe the piece after sanding. Oh yeah. So if y'all, <laughs> Susan's like, interesting. Interesting. Susan, is that me? Is that a, is that a like a, hmm, very interesting. <laughs> hey Gail. Uh, yes, obviously, if you sand your piece, you need to make sure you wipe. And if you sand your piece all the way down to wood, you really want to, you really probably want to prime that if you're going with a light color. Because uh, you've just opened that, those, those wood, the wood tannins are just like ready and willing to seep forward. Um, let's see. May, let me see if I've missed anything else. I think... I think that's it. So I'm going to take my time on this piece, y'all. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, I'm learning a lot tonight. Good, Patty. I'm so, gl so glad. Oh, good. You took my webinar. I have another one tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Anybody who's on the, on the fence wanting to like, mm, do I want to take better care of myself or do I not want to take better care of myself? Um, that is the only way that I can keep up with this Dixie Bell brand ambassadorship and my business is to take really good care of myself. So I have another webinar tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in the morning on, uh, just go to tracyspancy.com. Nope, shoot, nope, send me a message. <laughs> it's on Fit15 and Fearless. I can't even go into that right now. But thank you guys for, uh, for those of you that did come already and take good care of yourself. Um, I cannot wait to share more of this with y'all. It's gonna take me a little while since it was came to me free. I'm gonna put a lot of love into it and a lot of time into it. And I'm just gonna have a really good time with it. It's gonna be like my therapy for me, so. Um, Yay, Brenda, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Oh, Michelle, that is so wonderful. Ah, I, I know, hon. It is very scary. I feel like a lot of us get stuck in that stage where we gather all the information and then um, we don't know what to do. We, we like get the piece and then you're just frozen. So it's that simple. You saw me clean it, give it a shower in white lightning, shower it in water, wipe it back, remove your hardware, decide on your primer, and then you don't have to draw Marie Antoinette on it and cake and cotton candy hair. You can just paint it one color. So just start with that. Or pick a big piece and paint a bunch of colors on it. See how you like it. All right? Um, do you use a different brush for each product? Um, I have a shop sink very close, so I, I will just wash out my brushes in between. But um, like right now, I had, yeah, this one was white. This one was clear. Um, I had another brush ready in case we decided to start putting some paint down, but we don't really have time to do that. So, um, no, and like I don't have a brush, like this is always my primer brush and this is always my, uh, my slick stick brush. No, no, th that's what's great about the synthetic brushes. They wash completely clean and they are ready to use for whatever you need. Um, oh, is someone asking about painting their kitchen cabinets? Yes, I've painted my kitchen cabinets twice with Dixie Bell paint because I changed my mind on the color. 
So I have uh, Instagram IGTV about that. Dixie Bell has shared it. I've got a blog about it. You can go to tracysfancy.com and type in kitchen and the blog will come up. Um, it's a fabulous paint for kitchen cabinets. Fabulous. Fabulous. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to head on over to uh, my Facebook page and talk to my people over there a little bit. Um, so please, I would love it if you want to follow along or if you want to join me over there or make sure you're following me on Facebook and Instagram uh, and even YouTube so that you can be sure that you get to see this finished product when we are done. Thank you so much, you guys. What brushes do I use, Judy? Um, I use the mini as my favorite. These are my favorites. The mini, which these are both, and my flat medium. That's this one. These are my two favorites right here. Can I use white lightning on leather? Yes, you can. I, I white lightninged um, my leather chair and my daughter's leather headboard that I painted. They're both painted. I know, Alicia, it's amazing. They do. They clean right up. These are so old. I've used these, look at them, uh, so much. I've used them forever. They're great. Great, great brushes. Great investment for sure. Um, hey, Pat, you are so welcome. You're so welcome. Love you, sunshine. All right, I'm going to go. We've got people falling off. They're like, okay, she's done. I'll talk to you guys later. Love y'all. Bye-bye.